Okay, we are five videos in. This is our fifth one. And we're starting to get pretty nice rough cutouts, actually more refined cutouts of some of our elements. And it has everything to do with the quality of our selections. And so the one that kind of sticks out from these first few layers is this background rock, right? And I could just say, well, why not just get rid of it? You know, maybe I don't need it. But I want to show the options that digital art gives me. It's part of my sketch because I don't want to take just too much from the landscape of one layer. So maybe I want to make this bigger and more prominent in this corner of the composition. So you don't have to be a slave to your sketch. And now let's talk about the different ways I can cut it out. Because we're now seeing it wedged between a layer in front of it and the layers behind it, right? So because this is in the background, I want to keep that soft edge. So if I use the lasso tool and I have zero feathering and I have it on, on this option, which is the replace option, and I try to select around it, I just click and drag. like this, take a chunk. Remember, you wanna close your loop when you use the lasso, and then delete. It's gonna make it feel too sharp. Right. So let me go back in my history, and even before I used the lasso, and now let me turn on one feather, one pixel feathering. And what this will do is it will gradually soften one pixel all around where I select. And when I delete, it will be a softer edge like that. And that feels much more believable for the atmosphere of the scene. So what are other ways I can use this lasso? I have one feather on. Well, instead of doing it in chunks and then hitting delete, what if I make one section and then want to add on to it. So to add on, I could change the option on the tool. So this is called the unite instead of the replace. So now when I pick another selection, it will add on to the previous selection. And then the, sh the shortcut for that, because I actually like to keep my tools really predictable. So I like to keep it on the most simple replace option, but if I want to add on to it, I just hit shift. And shift will change it to a uniting, you know, additional selection. And then if I want to subtract away from it, I can hold down on my Mac option, the option key. And that will sub subtract away from the selection I had. Now you have to set your feathering before you make the selection in order for it to, to affect it. And then sometimes you might not want the feathering because remember the computer doesn't know what a rock, what's a rock and what's sky. You have to decide how hard that edge should be. And maybe you don't want it uniformly the same everywhere. These are your creative choices. Then once you have a selection, you can actually move that selection. So I'm going to, it's just going to move it in a couple pixels and then delete again. So as my first Photoshop teacher in 1994 said, with some of the very first versions of Photoshop, Using Photoshop is all about making good selections. So now if I do Control T, I have a well cut out mountain in the places I want to use it. 
And then I can decide, well, how big do I want it to be? I want to maybe be a little bit more imposing, a little bit bigger. Even though that deviates from my sketch, it makes it a little bit bigger. I like that more. I like how it's kind of catching light differently. Though it feels like it's a little too high, so I might have to sink it down in the horizon a little bit. And then I can always go to my middle ground. And this is what I like about selections too. I'm on my middle ground layer. I'm going to do a rough selection of the sky that overlaps that mountain. And then instead of hitting delete, I'm using it as a stencil, that selection. So now I'm going to do a low opacity brush, but I don't want to accidentally erase the rocks. So this protects the rocks because it will only erase wherever I've selected. And now I can use a really big brush and kind of sweep across it, but you'll see the rocks will stay really sharp. So it's all about selecting. Oops. But then when you're using different opacities, you have to be a little careful. Because now I'm getting into trouble with all these different layers of opacity with the eraser. Right. So instead, I'll go back before I did that eraser. And instead of just a one pixel feather, I'm going to deselect, I'm going to do a five pixel feather. And that way, when I erase, It will grade eight, it will grade eight using that feathering. So I don't get that, that halo. Okay. So I'm happy with that. If you're trying to make two horizon lines match, is there a way to select the skyline from one picture? and then fade it into the skyline from the picture behind it. So the, the first thing when trying to make things match, like if I have a horizon line on this side and a horizon line on this side from different reference, the first is to use your control T and your placement tools, like using warp, using distort, using scale to get them to line up. And then you want them to overlap as much as possible before you blend them together. The more overlap you have, the better. So that, yeah, takes, that takes me to this rock, right? And this rock is now going to go inside this volcano. So there's going to be some interesting overlap there. And one way I can do that is with internal compositing. So I can take my lasso, and this time I'm going to make it pretty sharp. So 0% feather. And I'm going to internally copy from the lip of this volcano. A nice sharp selection. Then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. It's like making a collar. And then I'm going to drag my rock underneath that collar. Right, And that makes it so I don't actually need to erase the bottom of the rock just right. It's easier to, to duplicate a selection of the mountain and get that better. So now I can focus on the edge of the rock. And I think I want to do this at at least one pixel feather. and cut out around it. 
Notice I'm not using the magic wand. The problem with using the magic wand on, on raster photos is that you'll end up with a lot of just uh, excess random pixels. So I'm just using the lasso and I'm being pretty exact. Sometimes the magic wand can be helpful. Like up here, all of these pixels seem very similar. So if I use the magic wand, which is right underneath the lasso in the drawer, and I have it so it's contiguous, so only pixels that are touching, it does a pretty good job. But without any feathering, notice how broken up that is. Whereas with my, and it might have left pixels other places if it wasn't so clean. Whereas with my feathered lasso, I can really control it perfectly. Now some tutorials, especially photography tutorials, will have you do this with a clipping mask and using the pen tool to get perfect curves. And that just looks too machine made to my eye for compositing. It, it's like, it doesn't look mechanical enough. Well, you know how the sky from the rocks background is, is a different color from the sky of like your space background? Yep. Is there a way to blend those together instead of getting rid of it? Yes. But it requires a lot more steps than getting rid of it. So the smarter move is to get rid of everything around the rock and then just put, if I want to blend in a new sky, just put a new background layer in over everything and blend that in. Because this is what I would do to blend this sky with this sky. But it's going to look pretty fast. So first... I would use my eraser. I'd use it at 0% hardness, as big as I can without losing the edge of my rock, right? And I would get rid of that hard edge. Oh, I want to do it at 100%, so it doesn't leave even a little bit of a lingering hard edge. And that starts to help build it. Next, and this gets us into what we'll do after we do the refined cutouts. Next, I would want to play with the lighting and the coloring. So first I would go to levels under image adjustments. And we're going to learn all this. And I'm going to go to the highlight levels and I'm going to limit them so that they're not so bright, right? But unfortunately that's going to change the coloring of all the pixels in that layer. But I'm going to get, if my focus is to get the sky to match, this is what I would do. And it's kind of silly to try to make daylight match nighttime, right? But it's possible. So now I'm going to go to the next adjustment, which is under image adjustments. And this is color balance. And I'm going to push the colors until they're more that kind of purplish. This is the temperature of the color. Right? But it doesn't change the lightness or darkness. Levels changes the lightness or darkness. But now it looks like you have matching light sources. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to keep, keep going with the adjustments. So now I can go to hue saturation and make big changes to the color. And actually take the light away from it. Right? But keep it somewhat saturated. And then maybe even make it a little bit on the bluer side. And now I've got the sky to match. But basically that shows the rock at nighttime. There's no automated way to do that? Like no computer that can kind of detect that for you? Like saturation levels, you use all that and just do it like a filter kind of? Not that will adjust this to match the settings of this. No. There are lots of things I can do to copy this and replace it, right? But no, this is all, you have to, because the computer doesn't know that this is in front of this. It's just all pixels, right? So the, the artist needs to make these creative decisions. So we're going to learn how to change all the color. But with with those adjustments, everything is possible.